Michael Frankel for CageMinds.com. Today, my guest, Bellator, featherweight, world champion, Daniel Strauss. How nice are those words to hear being called the world champion, Daniel? Feels good, man. It feels really good. It's exciting to be the champ. How, how long did it take, you know, right after to, to set in that the moment had came that you had climbed that mountain and got to where you wanted to be? Um, honestly, it's, it took a while. Uh, I think maybe maybe about eight weeks ago, it was probably it just hit me that uh, you know I was a world champ and whatnot. Um, you know, I take each fight as what it is a fight, and uh, I don't really work on uh, worry about you know the credentials and whatnot. I mean, to finally have one as such as a world champion, it really took uh, a while for me to get used to. It. So you got used to it by the time you were back in camp getting ready for the next one? Uh, yeah, you know, at probably about the start of my camp, you know, just, you know, the talk of the new fight and, uh, you know, what it meant to everybody else and whatnot, you know, it kind of started to dawn on me. When they ta started talking about that new fight, how surprising was it that they came to you with Kerr and Strauss 3 instead of Pitbull Strauss 2? Um... Honestly, it wasn't surprising to me at all. I mean, it is what it is. It's it's um, so they want me to fight. So you know, that's who I fight again. Last time we talked, you had said the key to the fight was you felt you had to get a finish. You didn't do that, but you won four rounds easily on the scorecards. So how did you feel about your complete performance? Um, I, I felt like I performed pretty well. Um, again, I didn't do what I want to, what I wanted to, um, but I, I felt like I dominated the fight. I don't feel like it was a boring fight. I feel like I beat him where he's strongest. You know, uh, people, you know, the Bellator commentators have given me this this name as a grinder or whatnot and whatnot, but, uh, you know, to me, it's like I, when I go in, I, I go in to fight, I fight for real. And, uh, you know, I fought him at where he's comfortable on the feet. I beat him on the feet. You know, I took him down when I needed to take him down. And, uh, you know, I, I think I executed most of the fight the right way. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I definitely would have liked to do more. You're right. Throwing that term out there, grinder, you know, today's MMA, it's, it's thrown out there a lot. It's almost like a dirty word. Would it be better to say that you're a pressure fighter? You like to have that relentless pace, push that pressure, stay in their face, and make it a fight fight? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, uh, it's not like I, I just, you know, take guys down and lay on top of them. Uh, most of my fights, you know, are on the feet. Yeah, I'm a wrestler, so that's what people uh, associate with me with. But, uh... Uh, I like to be on my feet. I like to throw hands. Uh, I, I like to get in guys' face, and I like to make them uncomfortable. And whatever I need to do to do that, that's what I'll do. Last time we talked, it was the second meeting between you and Curran, but with the time gap, it was like the first meeting. But now the time gap went from five years to five months. So how does that play with this camp? It's you know, the second back-to-back -back camp for the same guy? Um, it's the same deal. You know, um, the only difference is, is uh, we've seen each other recently now, so uh, we know just a little bit more. We've experienced a little bit more of each other. Uh, you know, Pat's an excellent fighter. He's, uh, um, he's very talented. But, um... You know, I don't think the uh, five months has given him enough time to, uh, you know, uh, come up with the best game plan to try to beat me. So, uh, you know, I, I think I, I win the next one uh, again. Five months, has it given you the opportunity to add some new tricks in the bag? Um, I think I just polished up um, what I needed to polish up on. You know, some of my hands, some of my uh, jiu-jitsu, um, some of my wrestling all around. Uh, come up with a different strategy for them. Um, so I think it's given me enough time to do it not quit. Um, you know, I, I won the fight, so I don't have to go and try to adapt to his style. 
you know. Uh, although I do have to, you know, there's still there's always adapting, but you know, like I said, I won fight, so I don't have to change my style uh, drastically to adapt to him, as opposed to him adapting to me. So I think it gives me a, it gave me enough time to work with new things and uh, get better at uh, other things. Being the hunted instead of the hunter, how does that feel? Mm, it's still the same for me, man. I'll always be the hunter. You know, whether there's a belt around my waist, whether there's a title over my head, uh, or anything, I'm out to get get what's mine. Um, I'm out to kill. I'm out to win. And uh, that's what I, that's what I do for a living. So um, you know, I, I try not to think about you know me at the top of the blue chain and everyone chasing after me. Uh, I feel like everybody needs to worry about me still chasing after them. You know, uh, I'm still hungry. I'm still trying to eat. You know, so uh, you know, you send in my way, I'm gonna eat it up. With the notoriety and the recognition of being the champion, is there new sponsors, new publicity? What's new going on in your world on that side? Um, not much. You know, the the publicity side it hasn't been much. You know, my name's been ringing bells. Uh, only for the simple fact people are aren't understanding the concept of me uh, having to fight Pat again. So that's been. You know, my name has been lingering uh, a lot around that. Uh, as far as sponsors, not, no, I didn't, you know, get boost in sponsors or anything. I have started to work with, uh, you know, new sponsors, though, uh, such as Virus, as you see. Um, you know, uh, great guys, great group of, group of guys. Uh, I'm happy to be around them, happy to be with them. Um, I changed up my management group. Um, and I just wanted to go on a different route than what I was going. So, uh, you know, a little has changed, but for the most part, everything's, uh, everything has stayed the same. Well, I asked you about being the hunted. You said you're hunting. So what did you think of the new group of guys that are hoping to be your prey? There's a tournament going on right now coming. Going on right now just happened last night. What did you think of the quarterfinals? Um, I think there were some good fights. I think there were some questionable uh, decisions, but uh, I really think it was some good fights and definitely some good talent. Um, you know, you got uh, a group of guys, like I said, in one of the strongest uh, weight classes uh, for, uh, for Bellator. And, uh, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm uh, overlooking those guys. I'm, I'm ready to eat those guys up, too. You know, uh, you know, they're excellent fighters. That's the people that I like to compare myself with. So, um, you know, I'm chasing them down. In Season 9 of Bellator, uh, Alexander Slomenko made two title defenses. Do you see something like that possibly happening to you here in Season 10? I hope so. You know, uh, I hope I can. You know, uh, I heard last night uh, something about uh, every week there'll be... Uh, there'll be a title fight, so, you know, with that being said, uh, I'm hoping uh, in this year uh, I can make a, you know, definitely a, a couple runs at the title and, uh, you know, continue fighting. Had to throw this out there. I was thinking again about the promotions and everything. Uh, Bellator recently, Bajoran Remedy being out everywhere, was talking about when they talked about the contract negotiations with Gilbert Melendez of uh, building up the fighters' brand instead of building up the promotions' brand. So, being a world champion, do you feel those words are uh, true? How they helped build up the Daniel Strauss brand? Uh, we're working on that. Um, you know. Right now, I can only focus on myself, so I have to build my own brand. Uh, and as a, you know, like I said, working with my management company, uh, that's what we're trying to do. Um, as far as you know, the the organization uh, working on my brand, um, you know, you tell me. You know, have they been working on my brand, or are they building me up as a fighter? That's you know, that's for that's for the fans to see. You know, fans see that they're building my brand, and obviously they are. Uh, if, if you don't see that, then, then there's your answer. You know, uh, but like I said, you know, it's 
as is, as far as me myself, you know, I'm working on building my brand. I want people to like me everywhere. You know, I want um, people to understand uh, not just me as a fighter, but me as a person. You know, I want people to see me and like me as who I am. You know, not that not to be a famous person or anything. You know, uh, you know, I get guys that um, it's really funny because uh, you know I get people that inbox me and you know ask me questions and I and I respond and you know or I'll text back or or, or I'll tweet back or whatever and. They'll ask for simple things. Can you do this? Can you do that? And I'll tell them I can't do this, but you know, send me your address. I'll do this, and, which is helping me build my brand. And people are, you know, starting to like me more because they understand that, uh, you know, I'm not some just person on the TV. I'm a real person. You know, uh, uh, I appreciate the fans. I appreciate, you know, people taking their time out to, you know, watch my fights. To, you know, watch me, look me up, and be a fan of me. So uh, I give that same, you know, appreciation back to them. So uh, that's what I try to do to build my brand. For the people that know, for the all around, you know, pound for pound list, you talk about featherweights. You're definitely top ten. And then with the fights coming up, we know Pitbull, we know Curran. They have some pretty recognizable names out there. Also, do you think that's just going to help? Even though you're the champion, just push you more because like Curran they have put more promotion behind him but everyone knows your name now from how you handled the four rounds last time winning four rounds does that just build you indirectly kind of uh yeah you know I let my work speak for itself you know you can call me a bum all day but if I'm beating the guys that you're watching and and uh you know like and you're telling you're telling me this guy's a beast and you're telling me this guy's unstoppable, and then you watch me beat him. You know, again, my work speaks for itself. Uh, I, I'm not here to down anybody. I'm not here to, you know, talk trash about anybody. I'm just here to do my job. So, uh, again, like I said, I let my work speak for itself. And, you know, uh, if I'm beating these top guys, then obviously, uh, you know, I should be mentioned somewhere. Uh, I should be noticed somewhere. Um, I should be recognized somewhere. So, uh, you know, again, like I said, you know, I let my work speak for itself and leave it at that. Being the champion, anything else? What have you been able to do for yourself? I know that you're down there in Florida now. You had to move from Ohio. What have you been able to do for yourself? A present you got for yourself? Something to help you relax or something? What did you do after becoming champion for you? Um, not much, man. Really, like I said, everything stayed the same for me. Um, you know, this is my job. You know, I'm not. Uh, I'm not here to be famous and, and gloat and walk around and, and you know be seen on the streets and, and mobbed by people. You know, this is my everyday job. I do my job like you do yours. So, um, you know, nothing special came to me for for winning the belt. You know, no no extra prizes. No. No, no, nothing like that. So, you know, I won the belt. I was happy with winning the belt, and uh, came home. Uh, I got to see my baby. I uh, hang out with her for a little bit before I had to return to the gym again, and uh, just got back to doing what I do best, and that's uh, training and fighting. So, you know, no, no big, you know, purchases. No, you know, no new, you know, people hanging around me or anything like that. Um, you know, just stand in my own lane. With the fight being, it's it's an if you it was a sport they call it a home game for Curran. He's gonna be close to home. So first you were the challenger. Now you're kind of going on the road, but your home of Ohio just a hop, skip, and a jump away. So does that kind of home field advantage for him play a distance or because you both came up through that Midwest regional circuit it's right at home for you anyway um it doesn't really matter to me you know um you can call it whatever you call it you know uh people ask me how I feel about it and you know the, my opinion was you know as I stated you know it's weird for me to fight him so close to his home me being a title holder but uh, where I fight doesn't bother me. Uh, who I fight doesn't bother me. 
and uh, you know that's that. You know you can put it in my backyard, his backyard, in his house. You know it doesn't matter. You know in his bedroom. I don't care. I'm gonna come to fight. I'm gonna come to win, and uh, I'm gonna leave with my hand raised. Last time you said to be victorious, you had to get a stoppage. Earlier in the interview, you said you didn't complete your mission as you wanted to with the stoppage. So is that still on the forefront? It's what you want to accomplish. Yeah, definitely. You know, this year, I, you know, I'm looking to finish with all the talk and, and what everybody has to say. You know, I just really want to silence the critics. Um, uh, first off, you know, I'm a, I'm a great fighter. I, I do my job well. You know, I don't just come in and kind of win fights. You know, I dominate guys, and I'm good at that. But uh, for some reason, that's not good enough. So, um, you know, I, I'm definitely looking to finish. You know, uh, you know my next, you know, all the fights, and and uh, you know, have my name talked in a different way, in a different manner. Uh, you know, I don't want to be seen as a boring fighter. I don't want to be seen as, you know. Um, uh, not smart fighter or whatnot, but uh, I, like I said, man, I want to win my fights. That's my first job. My first job is to win my fights and provide for my family. Uh, and then I can be an entertainer, and then I can be, you know, this guy or that guy. But uh, you know, my first thing first is to win the fights, and that's what I'm trying to do. But uh, you know, like I said, I'm definitely trying to, you know, finish the guys that are coming in front of me. We've been talking for a while, done these interviews with you for a while. I almost sense a different demeanor. Is it possible that in the last five months you're actually more determined and more focused now? Um, yeah, definitely. You know, um, it took me, uh, I, I sat down after getting the belt, man, and, uh, you know, I said to myself, you know, this isn't it. You know, this isn't, it was kind of, uh, you know, I kind of felt more disrespected after winning, you know. Uh, so, you know, I sat down and I told myself, you know, you got to bring, you got to step it up. You know, you got to keep stepping it up. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. So, um, sorry. So that's, that's what uh, I'm going to try to do. You know, I'm just, uh, you know, keep the fire burning. You know, I'm going to keep punching these guys in the face and, and I'm gonna keep coming hard. You know, like I said, I, I don't feel like I'm the hunted, I'm, I'm still the hunter and I'll always be the hunter. You know, and, I, and I'm out for blood. Out for blood, wow. 13 days away, if you guys aren't excited for this fight like I am, you must not have a pulse. Like always, Daniel, I thank you for the time. I don't know what they're doing to help build your brand, man, but I'll do anything I can to help you out. Love watching you fight and push the pace like you do. Who do you need to thank? I know there's people that are important. You got to shout out to them. Uh, first off, thank you for having me on. Uh, as always, I want to thank my fans, my family, and my friends for supporting me. Um, you know, I want to thank Paradigm Management Company for the for the love that they've sent towards me and the help that they've been helping me with. Uh, Virus uh, Sports Company, awesome performance company. They've been uh, awesome to me. Uh, APS, great nutrition company I've been working with. They've got me set up pretty well, and uh, you know I like working with those guys. And you know, outside of that, again, I just want to thank everybody for you know the, the love I've been shown, and uh, you know, um, you know the respect that people are are starting to give me. So um, you know, I want to thank them. That's what keeps me doing this, and uh, you know, and Bellator for all the time. With me, so. Bellator 112, see it on Spike TV, or be there live in Hammond, Indiana. Daniel Strauss, Pat Kern 3, the featherweight title's on the line. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you next time.